Chapter 19 During the Depression During the year 1925, I was employed as a second bookkeeper for the Hilo Sugar Company at Wainaku, Hawaii. During my employment, I also built a chain of 10 lease motion picture theaters on the island of Hawaii, known as the Royal Film Corporation. I was the manager of the corporation. It was incorporated under the laws of the territory of Hawaii for 50000 and I held 51% of the stock. I also had a film exchange in which films were rented from the mainland for island distribution. The films I distributed were mainly Western silent movies. My intention was to let my brother take over the business, but since he met with an accident, I resigned from the Hilo Sugar Company and took full charge of the corporation. A year before the Depression, I intended to put sound in the ten lease theaters. For six months, I used sound films and just made my expenses. The reason was that the sound was not up to expectations. Many bugs had to be ironed out. When the Depression set in, there was nothing I could do as nobody had money to spend on entertainment. I took a loss, paid what I owed, and closed the business. I had enough to tide myself over into another business or go to work as an accountant or salesman. I was not worried and believed I could make money again when I was ready. I came home to see my mother and father, now living at Pahoa, for about a month. During that time, I was trying to set myself into some kind of business. To keep myself busy, I again talked to my mother of different things about her family life during her girlhood days. The reason I asked her was that she was the head of the family in those days. She worked hard to feed the family. She had to help her father plant taro, fish, and do lots of other things that a boy should do, but she had to do it. That is the reason she knew all the secrets of the different rituals, because she participated as there was no one to help her father. When she was old enough, I should say about 18 years old, she met my father and married him. He helped her family and worked so hard that he made himself a good husband. She said if she married a Hawaiian, she would get nowhere in life. I asked her how she knew a Chinese made a good husband and father. She recalled that her cousin had married a Chinese, and he did all the house chores and cared for the children. She lived a life of ease. I asked, aren't you sorry you married my father? She said, no, all these years I have been happy, and he took care of all my family. Then we talked about old legends and different herbs used by the Hawaiians for different sicknesses. I should have kept the names in a diary, since trying to remember the names is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Sometimes, I questioned her about the kahunas using the art of the trance to communicate with the supernatural power. She asked me if I had seen a person possessed by a spirit and said, that spirit is doing the talking, but actually the person is talking. When a kahuna goes into a trance, he has the power to communicate to another force. But I said, all I hear is his speaking. She said, this is the only way his mind reacts. Before he goes into a trance, his mind is fixed like a book of the things he wants to say. During the time he is in a trance, you hear him speak. This is the answer to what he has in his mind. I asked, how do you know this is true? She explained, there were many times the family had the cleansing of the mind. This is the important factor. The mind is humble and all tuned to one thing. From each of these minds, the revelation may be told in a dream. This is the key. Whatever the dream is about, it reveals the answer to the question.
I am only telling exactly what my mother told me. Still, she wanted me not to have any part of what the Hawaiians believed as this was bad medicine. I told her that my children and grandchildren would want to know later. I promised her I would not do anything physically to learn the art and that all I was interested in was writing what I heard and saw. If I could do that, I would be satisfied. Someone later would read and go in a little deeper and bring out the good part. I always had the belief that the Hawaiians had something good, but would not tell about it. They guarded their secrets like gold at Fort Knox. I do not want to tell the world, but want my children and grandchildren to know these things because they have the rights of their Hawaiian heritage so they can say they are glad to know something of my grandparents. Maybe one of my grandchildren will carry on where I leave off. If so, it would be easy from here on out. My mother listened and agreed with me. I know for a fact because I was brought up by my grandparents. As a little boy, I slept with my grandfather on my mother's side. There were lots of things he did at night when everybody was asleep. One night when I was ten years old, I was up playing late and my cousin, who slept in the next room, called me to come to bed. I just rolled myself in the mattress lying on the floor and pulled the small blanket at my feet and threw it on me. My grandfather slept next to me, but before he slept, he picked up his pouch and tobacco. He placed the tobacco on the floor and took a pocket knife to cut it in small strips so he could roll it in his palm and fill up his small pouch. When that was done, he picked up his pipe and filled it with tobacco and began to smoke before he went to sleep. I liked the smell of the smoke for a while. Then I fell fast asleep. In the middle of the night, I heard him mumbling. It woke me up. I looked and saw him wearing a malo made of yellow feathers. He was about ten feet away from me. I did not move or make any noise. I saw him open a package of red cloth and set the coconut bowl out. He kneeled on both knees and bent over the bowl with both hands, palms wide open on the floor. He was either chanting or mumbling. I did not understand. Then he stood up. I could see his hands, and when he opened his palms, they were empty. Then I saw that he was trying to catch something. From my view, looking at him, he was trying to catch something in the air. He got it in his right palm. I saw him squeeze, and then I saw the substance of an egg running down his wrist. He bent down to get the coconut bowl and emptied the substance in it. He put the bowl down, and with his left hand, he used his fingers to remove the substance from his right palm. He picked up the cloth and wiped his hand. He wrapped the coconut bowl with the same red cloth and set it in the corner of the house on the beam facing west. Then he took the feather malo and folded it neatly and placed it in a small trunk and locked it. He then returned to the mattress, picked up his pipe, and smoked. I thought it was about three o'clock as the roosters began to crow for the first time. I fell asleep, and when I woke up, he was gone. I asked my grandmother where he was, and she said he must have gone to the mountain to pick some taro. I told her I wanted to go with him, and she said he probably forgot about it but I told her to scold him when he came home. That morning, there was a little commotion at the house. One of the neighbors came by and told my aunt that one of the other neighbors had died about three o'clock that morning, so she asked what the sickness was that he died of. The remark was that his death was a Hawaiian sickness. At that time, 
I did not pay any attention. My grandfather came back from the mountain with two bags of taro loaded on a donkey. I heard my grandmother tell him of the death of the neighbor, and I heard him say that he felt sorry to see him go. The day before the funeral, he left for the beach to fish and wouldn't be back for about a week. My grandmother and aunt attended the funeral. Before we left from the house, my grandmother blessed us by dipping a tea leaf in a bowl of salted water and sprayed it on us by shaking the leaf. After the funeral, there was a rumor among the neighbors that the death was caused by a kahuna. They did not know who did it, but since my grandfather had gone to the beach for a week, they were suspicious of him. My grandmother felt bad. I could see how she felt, but I did not pay any attention. As time passed, everything was forgotten. Once in a while, the same thing pointed at my grandfather, but no one could prove it. One day, I told my mother what I had seen my grandfather doing about three o'clock in the morning. My mother explained to me that it was the spirit that he caught, and when he squeezed the spirit of the person, he died. I asked if this was real, and my mother said it was, but I must keep it to myself and promise not to repeat it. I promised. I was lucky I had a mother I could talk things over with, and she explained everything.